Well, guys, here is a brand new, although not really new, this is more of a redo of my last Victoria 2 tutorial on how on tips to win or avoid the American Civil War as I'm redoing this because a user by the name of Brandon actually gave me some more information about the um, Civil War and I figured I need to talk about this or it's not being fully accurate and f and I need to strive for accuracies for these tutorials so thank you Brandon for pointing this out so I can redo this but most of the stuff I said was still correct so of course in order for the Civil War to happen First, you need to be America. Two, the Confederacy can't exist. Same goes for America, too. Three, slavery needs to be legal. Uh, the Dred Scott decision and John Brown's last last raid event needs to happen. And at least 40% of your upper house has to be liberal. Wow, 100% conservative. Hmm, the start of the um, game, I see. So once all that happens, the Confederacy has, um, the event House Divide will pop up. Usually sometime between the 1840s to the 1860s. And when it happens, all um, states here in this line will automatically join the Confederacy like historical. But it will also get bigger too. They can be bigger. I, I guess it may be based upon if you allow slave, slaves or not in each state. I have no idea yet. But I've seen like West Virginia, Kentucky, Missouri, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska... New Mexico, Arizona, some of the Mexican states that have been asked before. Utah, Nevada, although it's one state. I've seen Alberta up here that have been colonized by America before become the Confederacy. And I've even seen Hawaii before join the Confederacy. So, all we, this is the minimum right here. This is the, the very smallest the Confederacy can be, but expect them to be bigger possibly. Just keep that in mind. Now, to make it easier for you. Now, Civil War, of course, is already easy, but... If you want it to be even easier, don't do these, I mean, do these certain things. I forgot to mention this too. Don't build any troops. Well, I can't build any troops right now, unfortunately. But don't build any that have Dixie culture. I'm sure I have one. Let's see. Yankee, Yankee, Yankee. Okay, all Yankee. Maybe down here. Come on, press on you. No Yankee yet. Ah, right, here we go. Dixie. Okay. So... All troops, when the Civil War happens, all troops that are Dixie culture will join the Confederacy. And if they're in a, um, in a, um, brigade, they will instantly fight your brigade too. So, if Civil War broke out, this one Dixie, um, Dragoon will fight the other two. So, keep in mind, don't build any Dixie culture troops. All these, like right here, this whole 12k stack will join the Confederacy if the war breaks out. So, you won't weaken them that way. If you don't build any troops with Dixie Culture, they'll have less troops to soft with, and they'll have to mobilize and build their troops, which will take months, so you have a massive advantage. Also, don't build any factories, railroads, forts, or naval bases in any of these states that have highlight right here to help join the Confederacy. Now, factories and railroads, of course, depend on your government, like interventionists or laissez-faire, although I don't think any government that any policy of the parties America has by the time Civil War happens have laissez-faire, but the capitalists can build factories and railroads at least. So, you can't really control them. Once they build railroads, they start building, you can't stop them, but factories, you can shut them down if you have the option. So, don't build any factories or at least try to limit them in the South. That way, if they have no factories, their economy is more shit, and they're not producing the goods that they need, so it makes it take longer for them to build troops, per se. And they'll make less money, of course. Don't build railroads, because they'll increase the RGO output, so they'll make more money, and it'll allow them to move troops across the board, meaning their area quicker. Of course, that also will hurt, make you slower, too, but hey, it hurts them more. And railroad, I mean, forts and naval bases, you can do. Unfortunately, you already have this naval base down in Florida, New Orleans... And you can't get rid of them unless they're dismantled. I don't think you can dismantle naval bases, though, but forts you can. But don't build any of them down here. Forts make, I think, they increase defense in a province. So if they're, like, attacked. But more importantly, they make siege and take longer. So if you siege a province with a fort, it's going to take longer than if it did not have a fort. So keep that in mind. And naval bases make it, um... Not... Ma naval bases... Increase how many ships you can have, and they can also um allow you to make 
heavier ships which are much stronger. So don't build any naval bases that way not only will the Confederacy not have as many ships as they can have, they also will not have all the better ships they can have. But other than that, that's all you have to worry about. The Civil War is pretty easy. But, as I mentioned before, there is a way to avoid the Civil War if you so choose to. And this is where um, Brendan pointed out the um, thing I did not mention in the video. Now, in order to avoid the Civil War, you have to make slavery illegal. But how do you do that? Well, as you can see right here, like all these states, like Florida, Michigan, all of them, they're not states yet. They're, they're colonies. Once enough Yankees come in and um, you get 1% um, bureaucrats of Yankee um, culture, they will be, allow you to become states. As long as slavery is legal, when a pro colony becomes a state, you have the option to make the state a slave state or a free state. You need to make them all slave states because what happens is it will raise the conscience and militancy of all the pops that don't support um, slavery and it will force them to make slavery illegal. It will um, raise the um, militancy conscious enough to scare the conservatives or if any liberals get into power because you can see voters right here are, are, are already a third liberal almost so if you do an election you can get at least third of the liberals there give you at least 30% support maybe and if you get enough militancy maybe you can scare enough 20% of conservatives to get slavery illegal. And that will avoid the Civil War completely. But, there's one thing I forgot to mention. That's what Brennan mentioned. There is a thing in here called the Slavery Debate. It's a pop-up that happens completely random. I did not have it the, when I did my GSG Vicky mod playthrough of this game of um, America three years ago. So that's why I was able to outlaw slavery in 1839. But if this thing pops up, no matter what, you can't make slavery illegal. In fact, I still have the console command. Um, console command. Let's see, where was it at again? I did the test. Pretty sure. Oh, great. Looks like it didn't save. I could have swore it did. I think it was event. Like, right now, I can do it. See, right there, I can do it. The slavery to do it. So, if I had enough, um, liberals, I can abolish slavery. But I think it was event. Oops. 16001. What happened? What happened? That was weird. Yeah, there you go. So, slavery debate. And there you go. Now I can no longer do slave. Now I can no longer outlaw slavery, even if I had enough support to do it. And until the Civil War happens, or you pass the year 1875, you can't um, abolish slavery if the slavery debate happens. So, if that happens. The Civil War will happen no matter what. So if that, as you, if you want to avoid the Civil War, you need to abolish as quickly as possible. Or if it's too late, you're just going to have to restart. But those are, this, that's the redo of this tutorial on how to make the Civil War easier for you or to avoid it. Thank you, Brendan, for pointing out that I missed something so I can uh, make redo this tutorial. And I hope to do more tutorials in the future. Hope you enjoy.